So let me do a quick review describing this. Um, first of all, you have a cubic right here. HK is 3, 1. There you go. Your A is negative 2, so you're going to go right 1 and down 2. And then you go the, when you go the opposite direction, you go up 2, and you make that little shape. Remember, cubics grow and shrink very rapidly, so they drop fast like this. Now right here, we have a polynomial function. Your zeros are 0, 3, and negative 2 because that is what makes each of these factors zero. You can see them right here. That's negative 2, 0, and 3. When you add the powers, it's 1, 2, and then square to be two of these. So that's 4, so it's an even degree. The lead coefficient is positive, so we know it's going to go up on the right side. And since it's even, it's on the left side. It's going to go the same direction. And if there's a square on it, it does a little bouncing effect. And if there's no square, they go through. All right, the next one, we have right here this, this square root. Now, hk is negative 1, negative 3. So this is negative 1, negative 3. Your a value is 2. So you go over 1, up 2. And then you can get this point if you need to, which would be over 3, up 2. But don't worry about that. As long as you have these two points and know a square root has that look, you're golden. Now, um, remember, square roots grow very slowly, so they have that effect. And there's no values on the left side because you cannot square root negative numbers. All right, next one is this cube root. And hk is 2, negative, 2 positive 1, sorry, so you're over 2, up 1. Your a value, if you look in the front, is negative 1, so when you go over 1, you drop 1. And so when you go the opposite direction, you're going to rise 1. And so it kind of looks like a square root but then it has another square root going the opposite direction. And um, cube roots also grow or shrink very slowly, so you should then know how that looks. Then here, when you have a negative power, make sure you switch it to a positive power and flip the base, so 4 becomes 1 fourth. So I'm actually going to look at this. It helps me. I know my asymptote is going to be at negative 4, so right down here at negative 4. I know I'm going to be, from negative 4, I'm going to be up 8 for my initial value, so from here I'm going to go up 8. And then, if I'm dividing by 4, that means I take 8 and divide by 4, so that means my next one is going to be 2. So from here, I'm going to go up 2. Now, that's a little trick. Otherwise, you just plug in numbers. So plug in 0, crunch it. Plug in 1, crunch it, and you can get these two points. You just got to know there's an asymptote here at the k value. If you kept plugging in numbers, you would notice it gets closer and closer to this asymptote. And the last one here, the log. Log, your hk is negative 4 negative 1. The shortcut for that is when you find negative 4, negative 1, right there, the asymptote goes through that. Then you go over 1, go back to that hk, then you go over the base, which is 4, and then up 3, which is the a. That's the shortcut. Otherwise, if you don't remember the shortcut, you have to plug in numbers which make this 1 and the base of 4. So again, you need 1, make this 1, so you want to plug in negative 3, and what makes this 4 would be 0. So if you plug those numbers in, you get these two dots, and you make that curve. Remember, logs grow very slowly. They kind of almost look like a square root graph, um, except they go down towards an asymptote. All right, so let's now answer these questions. All right, this is a cubic. Bam. The domain... For this graph, is everything left, right. There's no stopping, no values you cannot plug in. The y-intercept, well, that's going to be way up here somewhere. And so if I plug in, um, to get the y-intercept, I plugged in. I um, don't know why I put negative 3. Oh, yeah, I do. Where's the negative 3 come from? Because you put 0 in here. For y-intercept, you put in 0 in, which gets a negative 3. And when you crunch it, you get 55, which is way off the graph. Zeros, well, where are you caught? It looks about 4. But if you actually calculate it, it's 3.8. That one's kind of an approximation. Just know it's close to 4. All right? Interval positive means where is this graph above this x-axis? So if it's above the x-axis all the way to that 0, so from negative infinity to that 0 we got previously, there are no asymptotes. There are no increasing uh, intervals because this whole thing drops. And then in behavior on the left, you're going up. On the right, you're going down. So right, you're going down. Left, you're going up. So the next one, this polynomial is fourth degree. Good, polynomial, a little bit more description. All real numbers, again, there's nothing that I cannot plug into this. It'll always have a value. Um, next, to find the y-intercept, I plug in 0. So when I plug in 0 to all those x's, I get 0. My zeros are, again, we looked at those earlier, boom, boom, boom. All right. My interval is positive. Ooh, there's a whole bunch. It's positive all the way to here, 
all right? And then from here to here, it's positive again, and then from here on. Now, I wrote two different integrals because negative 2 is not positive nor negative. It's 0. So, again, you have this interval to here, all right? Then you have this interval is also positive, and then you have this interval, and that's 1, 2, 3. No asymptotes, and interval is increasing. Well, it looks like it's increasing from here to whatever that is, so I approximated that max right there as negative 0.75, and it's also increasing from this minimum, which would be, looks about 2, to infinity. So that's also increasing, and then it's going up on both sides. Next, a square root graph right here. All right, we've got a square root graph. Our domain is from that dot to the right, so negative 1 over, including negative 1. Bracket's important. Plug in 0, that'll give me my y-intercept. So when I plug in 0, I get a 1 inside, and I get a negative 1, which kind of makes sense. There it is, boom. My 0, it looks like I guessed it. This looks like about 1.25, so I went 1.25. And uh, my interval positive would be from that 0 to the right. See how it's always going up? So that's why I went from that 0 value to the right, not including the 0. No asymptotes. Interval increasing. Why is it this? Well, the whole thing's increasing. All right, you're just not at negative 1. That's the starting point. And there is no left behavior, but on the right, you're going up, just very slowly. Now, you got this cube root here, cube root, all real numbers, um, a lot of all real numbers here. Um, when you plug in 0 here, you get negative 2 inside, which when you crunch that, you get about 2.1. Um, then your zeros, uh, let's see, it looks like we have 3 there, yeah? At 3 is a 0. Um, on interval positive, so from this dot to the left, it's positive. So wouldn't that be from 3 to the left is right there. There's no asymptotes. Um, it's never increasing. It's always dropping. It's always going smaller just very slowly. And on the left, you're going up, and on the right, you're going down, just very slowly. Next, we got this exponential, which I like writing like this. It's all row numbers. Exponentials have no issues. When you plug in 0 to x on either one of these, it looks like I plugged in this one. I get 4. Here, my, uh, looks like my 0 is 0 0.5. Let's see. Uh, that looks about 0.5. Kind of just guess from the graph. And then, where is it positive? Well, from that dot to the left forever, will it be above the x-axis? So that's why I have that 0 to the left, the negative side, infinity side. And do I have an asymptote? Yes, I finally have one. That is a horizontal asymptote of y equals negative 4. It's never increasing. It's always decreasing. It's going on the right side. It's going down, and it's approaching y equals negative 4, that asymptote. And on the left side, it's going up forever, very quickly. All right, last one. This one right here, the log. It's logarithmic. Um, our domain is from negative 4 to infinity, meaning not touching negative 4, but from that all to the right. When I plug in 0 to this, you'll get 4 inside, crunch it, you get 2, which you can see I hit about 2 right there. Cool. And then next, um, I want, oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, y-intercept of 2. I messed that one up. There's your y-intercept of 2. I messed, that was your 0, which is right here. There's my 0, negative 2.4. All right, and where is it positive? It's from the 0 to the right side. See how it's all up from that 0 to the right? And that right there is saying from the 0 value to the right forever. And there is an asymptote. It's vertical at negative 4 here. That's x equals negative 4. And its interval increasing is the whole thing. The whole graph is increasing, but it's the whole graph starts at negative 4 to infinity, so that's increasing interval. Um, on the left side, it's dropping to infinity, um, but... Um, it approaches negative 4, the x value of negative 4, meaning it won't get past negative 4, but it is dropping to infinity um, in the y value. On the right side, it is growing to infinity.